Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Daniel Brand. I'm the CEO of Fotorio. It's a great pleasure and honor to be with you this morning. Today, we're going to address the safe journey towards autonomous manufacturing. Fotorio was founded three years ago to provide effective protection for industrial organizations from realistic cyber challenges. I emphasize effective and realistic as the reason for founding Fotorio was a multitude of solutions that were providing very partial protection against nation state threats and in reality providing customers with very little value. Based on our experience in cyber defense, in mission critical systems, and deep understanding of the industrial domain, we sought to change this. I think that today uh, I'm maybe the least expert in explaining you uh, what are the benefits of digitalization or smart manufacturing or smart production um, or autonomous manufacturing uh, to provide you the value that you are looking for. It starts from cost efficiencies, making our processes much more efficient in material, human resources and, and financial costs. It will give us a higher quality in our operations and our products. It will enable us to follow the market and provide our customers with a much uh, market fit uh, delivery and we can be much more agile in the process and of course a very important part is production uptime because we need to support demand when it, it's needed but when introducing those type of technologies which are, which are in set essential to provide us with the benefits of the digitalization we're basically opening our production or expanding what we call the attack surface so the only way to ensure that we are getting those benefits is to make sure that we are building a resilient and advanced operational floor. And I will try to take you today to the journey and explain what are the challenges and what we believe in Autorio are the main uh, steps or milestones that, that we need to take when we're trying to build resiliency in the production floor. Building resiliency into IT uh, driven organizations is a complex process. This process is much more complex when we're trying to uh, build in resiliency in our type of environments. Starting from the legacy systems, we are trying to keep our install base and make sure that we are uh, making the best of the investments that we did in the past. We have some very old technologies, maybe 10 or 15 years, coming from multiple vendors. There were all built during the REGEC uh, time where there was no connectivity or very uh, narrow band connectivity. They have no inherent security mechanisms and they have very old protocols and very old, old operational systems that are easily exploited. We want to connect those to the new environments, to the projects that we are modernizing, adding to existing floors or building a new plant as an example, but they are all connected to the same operational bus. So we are introducing a lot of hyperconnectivity, whether in the inter uh, between the different sites, plants, or outside into the internet to third party builders that we'll address in a second. And maybe intra when we want to connect a lot of IoT devices and, and using new technologies to provide some new of the benefits. Those IoT devices that are uh, bringing a lot of hyperconnectivity into the production floor are also merging the cyber aspect with the physical aspect, hence enhancing the challenges, the threats, and, and some of the uh, potential outcomes like safety and, and uptime. And of course, uh, we need to build in cybersecurity mechanisms in those deliveries, whether those are partial in an existing operational floor or a new operational floor, and they have to interconnect with the entire end-to-end -end architecture. Another thing that challenges today is the third-party vendors, because we are dependent on OEM providing us with some of their maintenance, uh, monitoring capabilities, but also we are pushing towards uh, operational and performance optimization, which usually come from third-party vendors. So basically, we are allowing them direct access to the production floor. 
So hence, we are expanding the attack surface, or let me put that in, in simple word, words. We are, our cyber security now depends on the level of cyber security that those third party vendors have. If they are breached and hacked, and they can be the front hold in uh, infiltrating to our environments. And in most organizations that we have met until today, there is very little control or no control at all over the policies and security postures, who connects, when when it connects, why it connects, what is it doing, and to what part of the floor it is connecting. So the main topic of today's presentation is to try and share with you some of our lessons learned from 30 years of experience on how basically we can achieve operational resiliency in an hybrid industrial production site. And probably, as I said before, you are much more expert in your production uh, environments, but we understand how to provide an overarching cyber resiliency. So I think that we can all uh, agree that the only way to address, and this is, this is coming from the risk management uh, type of uh, thinking, uh, with cyber threats is to have a combination of a pre-bridge, let's find our exposures and gaps, where we are exposed, where we leave things open, where uh, bad, play, bad actors or bad players can infiltrate and exploit our production floor, long before those actors can identify that we really have a open gap or an exposure. And of course, when the first layer of defense fails, we need to have also a very fast, quick detection, post-breach control, that will identify a potential breach and contain and mitigate it. Uh, so if I take, I need to take you with to the way of thinking, I would say that the uh, proactive or prescriptive type of thinking would uh, try and identify the causes, why the hacker can be successful in uh, penetrating our production floor, and the post-breach need to act and with the consequences because we want to be very efficient so we need to understand the impact and prioritize based to the potential outcomes and while trying to maintain continuous operations. In an IT environment uh, we have developed over the years both technologies, processes and different type of thinking that will provide us to do uh, exactly a proactive type of measure. So patching is one of the, uh, the processes. We identify some exposures, some vulnerabilities. The vendor provides a patch, and we are patching this over weekend or when it is possible. As we know, in our environment, it's highly unacceptable to patch because the operational floors uh, are, need to work constantly. Our window of maintenance comes once a at once every six months or once every year. And uh, for most of machinery, the OEMs or the vendors do not provide a patch. And if you'd like to patch a part of the machine, then you might lose the warranty. So the main philosophy or uh, the main way to address this is uh, that we did until recently is do not touch the OT environment. So basically this, oh, this leaves us open and as we've seen uh, in the recent years, we see more and more successful attacks that are detected late, and, and there, was, there will be always damage associated with that because it might cause downtime for, and we see here in the average downtime in a ransomware uh, in 2020 was 17 days, but always we will need to react in a crisis mode of thinking. And the main reason that we couldn't touch the OT environment was based on, on the fact that the, uh, the best way to have a proactive risk assessment is to scan. We know that we cannot scan our type of environments. We cannot scan those because if we, if we do that, we might crash the production floor itself. So, uh, over the last three years at Autorio, we developed both thinking, a unique concept, and also technology that will allow us 
to evaluate in a privileged type of uh, way. And we do that by using a digital twin. The idea of a digital twin is already very familiar in our industry. We are building a cyber digital twin that basically is a very similar replica, virtual replica of the production flow. And we are continuously doing a scanning and assessment, identifying the gaps. So the value is reducing the risk to production by continuous exposure identification. And the main value to the customer or what the customer will get is a periodic or continuous uh, report or uh, playbook that will provide him some workarounds mitigation with zero disturbance to production. While we understand again that we might face a situation where the first layer of defense failed and it happened unfortunately. So in a post breach uh, type of second uh, line of defense, we would try to minimize the disruption to production by quick detection and alert, very fast containment and efficient remediation uh, by a back office of uh, industrial OT cyber experts. By adopting five simple concepts or measures, you can uh, ensure that you are providing ongoing resiliency to your production flow. The first step is the build beam. In the new machinery, new applications, new systems, or new lines that you're buying, make sure that they are meeting the highest market standards of cybersecurity. Make sure that they are built to have resiliency inherently, and they can connect to an overarching security architecture that you have designed to your entire organizations. As I discussed before, hence, I would uh, highly recommend you to take a proactive Try to continuously find, identify, and explore the exposures, the gaps, where things are. And this is not a one-off type of assessment. Because production floors, as you know them, they are continuously changing. Uh, they have maintenance window. Uh, Third-party vendors are connecting to our production floors. So this is an ongoing process. Uh, secondly, uh, because it is a very... Uh, resourceful process, we need to apply some smart predictive risk-based management methodologies because we need to understand what this exposure risks would it puts at risk, what would be the potential impact, and prioritize the resource allocation accordingly. And, and the last thing, because we want to have that very effectively and very efficiently on an ongoing process, we need to utilize autom automation in a, in a very similar manner that we have uh, introduced automation to other processes in our production floors for the last 30 to 40 years. Especially by using cyber digital twins the, of the sort that I explained before, we can overcome uh, the production constraints of do not touch and we want to have zero disturbance to production and we can achieve that in a very well, well and effective way. If you do not have an overarching organizational cyber architecture, you need to develop one. Because the convergence of IT, OT, and IoT have left our industry as a low hanging fruit to cyber criminals. So we need to build a coherent vendor agnostic because we have a multi vendor environment. We have a multi-generational environment, security architecture and security posture that uh, contains or have also the steps of monitoring and controls built in, in place. It is also important that this end-to-end -end overarching cyber architecture or secure cyber security architecture will meet the market standards and the regulations to our line of industry. You need to do that from the machine level to the entire production site to the entire organization. You need to put in some governance processes because sooner rather than later, it will be a request both the, from the insurers, the governments, the regulators, and of course our customers. And always monitor and manage connectivity that comes from outside into the organization. Today we understand that to, to connect a USB stick is a very 
dangerous process. But hence, we are uh, on a daily basis allowing other third party vendors to connect to the machine remotely without any understanding of their security posture in their environments. More than that, we've touched briefly before the automation point, because there are a lot of those security mechanisms and operational systems can produce a lot of alerts, a lot of loads, a lot of events. We need to automatically reduce the noise generated by those systems and effectively be, be focused on what we really need to uh, work on and really what could uh, pose some danger to our production. Both if it comes from the OT environment, the IoT environment, or the connected IT environment. And we need to cross-correlate those uh, noises in order to do a very strong noise suppression process. Data-driven analytics is already a market standard. We need to use that as well as a very important tool in order to be able to do a more effective and efficient and fast cybersecurity process. Whether this is in a proactive approach, but it's even more, more important when we are trying as a second line of defense to do that for the post-breach type of detection and uh, remediation. And at the end, we need to apply walkarounds. Because we know patching is not an option, but we know that segmentation is. So we need to have very simple playbooks that are already known and practiced uh, and trained, and we need to apply them once we have a pre-breach type of exposure or a post-breach type of detection. And the last, we need to orchestrate all our existing solutions. Because if we do not orchestrate them, we will have islands of security. And islands of security are the best fit for the attacker. The attacker is looking for the seams between the different islands, and this will be his easier penetration point. So if we'd like to make the attacker's life very hard, hence pushing him to other lines of business, we need to have a seamless uh, security posture and the only way to have a seamless security posture is by orchestrating all existing solutions and having a single page of glass. I would say more than that by understanding that our production floors are connected in two different workflows one into the CMMS MES type of system the, the industrial world and the other one is to the IT environment we need to take those type of orchestrated uh, dashboards and insights and uh, seamlessly integrate them into the existing workflows and we are doing that today. So let me take you briefly to how the Autorio Rom Square platform is achieving all those five steps that we just discussed. So the first thing we are connecting or the Autorio Rom Square platform is connecting to all existing data sources on the production floor, whether those are network based uh, the segmentation, the firewall, uh, the IDSs of the production floor, the endpoint protection, all security mechanisms that are existing on the production floor, IoT devices, IT devices, and OT devices, but more importantly, the operational technologies, DCSs, OPCs, and the project files. And to all of you who are not familiar with the terminology of project files, those are the blueprints of production. Based on the data sources that we gathered, we are building the digital twin. And the way to uh, turn that into a cyber digital twin is to take a very extensive and rich data vulnerability database that is based both on uh, available data sources uh, from, the, from the web, but also our own internal proprietary research data source, which is very rich and take the vulnerabilities and uh, put them on the digital twin. Hence, we have now the understanding of the connectivity, the layers, the different technologies, processes, uh, segmentation, but also we can understand the vulnerabilities associated with each asset. And more, more than that, we know the role of the asset in the operational process, so we can prioritize the vulnerabilities and exposures uh, according to their potential impact 
if they are breached. The third part, and this is a patent pending, we are running a breach and attack simulation or an attack vector simulation on the digital twin. If we are identifying an exposure or a vulnerability that can be exploited, we understand that the same process can be implemented on the real production floor. So basically we are running a breach and attack assessment on the production floor with zero risk to the production floor. Based on the findings of this continuous breach and attack simulation, we can prioritize the criticality of the risks and uh, allocate the resources accordingly. The last part, we understand, we need to mitigate. If this is in a pre-breach situation or a proactive uh, prescriptive type of measure, we will support the operator by uh, introducing workarounds easily deployed with zero disturbance to production floor that will improve segmentation, uh, harden some equipment, or in, in some cases we will provide uh, signatures that will be like a virtual patching type of mechanism. Understanding that today we have two workflows that serve the stakeholders on the cybersecurity topic in OT environments, we will seamlessly integrate into the CMMSs, MES systems, or into the IT systems, both for asset management and for uh, security operations. In a post-breach detection type of solution, we not only we will be able to identify the lateral movement of the bridge much faster than other technologies, uh, based on the fact that we're sitting on different layers of the production floor, but also we will be able to support that with prompt mitigation that will have zero impact uh, on uh, the production itself, or, or as minimal impact on the production floor itself, based on the fact that we know that patching is not an option. So just to summarize, uh, Otorio has developed for the last three years the world leading first NIST framework-based OT security platform that first of all protects by identifying all the assets in a very uh, rich way, but also uh, it, when the first line of defense fails, detects, responds, and uh, enables fast recovery. So to try and finalize in a very brief way, what will be the fastest, more effective and very much efficient way to be able to modernize and harness the uh, digitalization technologies and the innovation associated with that and building resiliency into our production floor, we need to apply for four very simple uh, points move from a reactive type of approach to a proactive type of approach. We already did that when we, are, we went from the uh, operational process to performance optimization. By performance optimization, we are moving from a reactive type of understanding what, are the, uh, effective, what is the effectiveness of the production floor and, doing, and, and building a more effective process. Hence, we need to do that also in the security posture. We need to understand that IT-driven technologies are excellent for IT-focused organizations. But in our line of business, where we have a convergence of OT, IT, and IoT in a multi-generational, multi-vendor type of environment, we need to, add, to build a architecture for layers of uh, security technologies that are, that are fit and tailored to the industrial world and to our vertical, because this changes from a vertical to vertical. Understanding that on the production floors, we have multiple uh, stakeholders, that their daily operation and their daily responsibilities are to make sure that we are effective and efficient, and we're delivering the outcome to our customers. All the existing solutions need to have a light touch, to be non-intrusive, and where we need to be uh, operating and in a scan type of environment, we need to use cyber digital tree. At, at the end of the day, because we are continuously building our operational flow, and this is going to be an ongoing process that will be a part of our life for the next 50, 60, 150 years, I think that we need to have all the time a very uh, well-designed 
and understand, understandable end-to-end -end security architecture. It was a pleasure to be with you today. And if you have any other questions or would like to learn more about our solutions and capabilities and tutorial, uh, please reach out to us and we'll be happily uh, answer any concern, question or request you have. Thank you very much and stay safe.